hello. So it's Thursday. We're starting the vlog a little early because we're leaving for camping in just a minute to go to Traverse City. So I wanted to just start the vlog today and do a little pack with me which books I'm bringing. And I thought we could pack my books together. So glasses are a must because I do need glasses. You know the one problem is I always forget bookmarks so I did just remember to get some bookmarks. I'm bringing The Word for World is Forest by Ursula K. Le Guin because on the trip last weekend, I read The Left Hand of Darkness and it was the perfect vacation read because I could just sit and really dedicate time to it. So this one is even shorter. It is 128 pages and I do believe it deals with heavy topics. Again, I think it deals with slavery perhaps. Don't quote me on that. This was published in the 70s, I want to say. And I don't know which number, yeah, 1976. I don't know which number in the Hainish cycle this is, but I'm really excited to read it and bring it with me. It's very short, as I said. So that's the first one. The second thing I'm bringing is my arc of She Who Became the Sun. I also have the E arc of this, so I feel like it's gonna get read no matter what. This feels like bigger than I want it to be. It's less than 400 pages or it's right around 400 pages. And this is the Patreon buddy read for the month. Month. So I definitely need to dive into this. Everyone that's read it so far in Patreon this month has really enjoyed it. So that gives me high hopes and I feel like I will really enjoy it too. I don't know why I was just so close. <laughs> Back it up. So um, I'm going to be starting this, I think, because I'm kind of feeling a bit of fantasy. I kind of want to kneel down. That is so much more comfortable for my back. Straighten this out. Okay, I'm, I'm feeling a little bit of fantasy because of everything I've been reading lately. And so I wanted to pick up the bone chips, but then I was like, you should probably read your Patreon buddy read first. So since I'm craving a bit of fantasy, I'm going to pick up She Who Became the Sun. So these are first. I'm in a weird mood. We'll just write it out. Um, I'm bringing Berserk Volume 6 because I didn't finish it last weekend. Well, I've already run out of bookmarks. That's no good. I need to go get some more bookmarks. I'll bring my Mia Corvier bookmark. So I want to continue on with this. Plus, MAGA is just excellent for bringing on vacation. And then I'm bringing the graphic novel Avatar The Last Airbender. And this is The Lost Adventures. So I ordered this because I thought I had read it. But really, it was on my to-read shelf because I thought it looked good. So I almost think this is when they're... Well, actually, I don't know. Cause they look young in this. I have to, I have to look at my Goodreads, but I don't, yeah, I definitely didn't read this. It says, where did the last of the airbenders hide? When was Zuko and Mai's first kiss? Who would win in an earthbending showdown, Toph or King Bumi? And why did the Earth King decide to travel the world in disguise? So we'll see, but I'm excited to pick this up. I've been really missing reading Avatar The Last Airbender. Now on my Kindle, I'm going to be reading The Last House on Needless Street. I started it yesterday and I am 70% of the way through it, I think. It's so good. It's so good. I cannot believe that I almost didn't choose to pick this up. So this was an e-arc I got. Tor Nightfire frequently sends me books, e-arcs to read. And this one just didn't call to me. Something about the synopsis did not make it feel like I wanted to pick it up. I just thought, mm, another thriller horror. Oh my God, it's so good. I cannot believe that I almost didn't pick this book up. I would have been so sad. It is so readable. I cannot put it down. Any second I get between patients at work, I'm like, I need to read the next little bit because it's so freaking good and it's disturbing and it's creepy and it's unsettling. And I scared myself reading it in the dark last night. And oh my God, it's so good. So if you have a chance and you're interested in horror and thriller suspense type of books, um, a little bit of unreliable narration going on at some point in this novel, which is a favorite trope of mine, absolute favorite trope. So then pick that up, please, because it's so good, you won't regret it. And then right now for audiobooks, for Audible, I'm still listening to The Book of Accidents by Chuck Wendig. And after that, next up is Foundation and Persepolis Rising. Oh my God, my TBR this month is off the chain. It is outrageous. Go hard or go home. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna go because we have to leave ASAP and I need to load all this stuff up into the camper. Hope you guys liked last week's reading vlog with the camping vibes. Let me know if you did. Give me some feedback. There's Carly just taking a little bath back there. Yeah, so this is what's coming with me this weekend. Hopefully we get lots and lots of reading done.
Got my jersey on. We're headed out for a bike ride. I have no idea what I want to read. My physical book is The Word for World is Forest, and it's great. But what should my ebook be? I tried a middle grade Cathedral of Bones, and I'm not vibing it. It's good, but I'm just not in that mood. I've just been laying here reading for a bit. The word for world is forest, and I'm absolutely loving it. Like, I think I like this more than The Left Hand of Darkness, actually. Also, this is one of my, there we go, favorite covers ever. I absolutely love this cover. Um, also, like, knowing what it's about. So, I've made it to page 88, and there are exactly 128 pages in the book. So, I should finish it tonight or tomorrow. It has literally been the most peaceful time laying on the beach here. Waves. So nice in Traverse City. We did a 30 mile bike ride this morning and then just kind of hung out, took it easy, laid on the beach, got a suntan, went swimming, red. It's been a great day. I forgot to say too that my patrons did a poll for me today. So the next thing that I'm going to pick up, um, they were able to choose between Lakewood and um, Earthlings. So I'll insert those pictures. Lakewood is definitely one I want to get to. Um, it is listed under African American sci-fi on Scribd and hopefully these people don't see me talking. <laughs> but it's definitely one I'm going to get to. But for the time being, the one that won is Earthlings and it's translated and I'm very much looking forward to reading it. The only person I've seen talk about it on booktube is Kat from Paperback Dreams who is one of my all-time favorite. Um, booktube is always, always, always a favorite, so I'm really excited to check it out. So peaceful here. I've been waiting for this for so long. Love this book. What are you getting? Oh my gosh, you're so close to it. Mm-hmm. You're so close. Be careful, he was just washing away in the waves. Oh man, there's someone's trash over there. No, 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 no. Okay, I started this yesterday, you guys, and I just finished it right now. I have to admit, I like it quite significantly more than The Left Hand of Darkness. And I think just because of the themes um, of war, killing, slavery, deforestation, um, peaceful living, living off the land, just the themes really resonated with me. And I think it was very smart and very well done. I would reread this again in a heartbeat one day, um, being only 130 pages as well. So I highly recommend this one. I probably will recommend this to people more frequently than The Left Hand of Darkness because it's much more accessible. It's way easier to get into. It's shorter. The writing style, while the prose is still stunning, it's much easier to read. Um, it's much easier to understand. And I have a lot of tabs that I made in my dog ears of uh, quotes that I would like to read you guys once I get back home. But I've been on the beach here for like nearly five hours, um, swimming, hanging out, reading, etc., talking, meeting people. And I managed to finish this. I started this last night when we got here. I read the first 20 pages right before we got here and then I finished it today so you can read this in no time but this is so far my favorite thing I've read by Ursula K. Le Guin and I, I'm just shocked that more people don't like this or more people don't talk about it. It's a title that I have really had on my radar for quite some time and I'm just um, I guess it's kind of strange to me that I never ever hear anyone recommend it or really even discussing it but it has such important themes and it was really well done and there's obviously so much I'd like to say about it but I think it just needs to sit with me a bit so so far I'm having great luck in reading Ursula K. Le Guin and um, yeah these are two more SF masterwork titles that I'm so glad to read. Can't wait to keep reading them. I'm having so much fun on this journey. Three down. I mean I've obviously read SF masterworks in the past. I've read quite a few but I'm having fun discussing them with people. So I'd love to hear if you've read this. I'd love to hear in the comments what your thoughts are on the word for world is forest. I just love that in this people's culture, the um, same the 
same word is used for world and forest because their world is the forest and you know human beings are taking it from them per usual so um but that's that i don't know if i told you guys yesterday on the way up here that i finished um the last house on Newgate street i think i did freaking phenomenal and i also read the entirety of berserk volume six so i'll update more about that later I'm gonna give you guys a little book haul eventually because I went book shopping as you saw, but I will just let you know now I picked up Books of Blood, um, the three volumes by Clive Barker since I've wanted to read more. And the guy at the bookstore was like, oh honey, get ready, prepare yourself. It was like, it was a lot. And I was like, thank goodness. Also, I didn't know it was coming to Hulu, but I'm curious about that. But there's two things I want to read. The first one is that says, um, he's talking in the introduction here about his partner's experience dressing up on Halloween. And he was saying, I had mightily enjoyed eliciting that complicated package of responses, knowing the words I was putting on the page would stop people in their tracks as my lover's curious beauty was doing now making them wonder perhaps if the line between what they feared and what they took pleasure in was not a good deal finer than they once imagined i thought that was beautiful and then he's talking about novels versus short stories and he says the man who'd written that book was no longer around he's referencing weave world he died in me was buried in me we are all our own graveyards i believe we squat amongst the tombs of the people we were if we're healthy, every day is a celebration, a day of the dead, in which we give thanks for the lives that we lived. And if we are neurotic, we brood and mourn and wish the past was still present. Isn't that beautiful? Okay, I loved this. They were talking about Halloween again, and he says, the people behind the masks on Santa Monica Boulevard last October weren't perverts or fiends. They were, for the most part, ordinary folks who were taking this opportunity to express an appetite that our culture demands we repress most of the time. A repression that I perversely applaud, by the way. The appetite is all the more powerful if it's kept under lock and key. But we need to touch darkness in our souls now and again in a it's a way to reconnect with the primal self, the self that probably existed before we could shape words, that knows the world contains great light and great darkness and that one cannot exist without the other. Ugh, he is brilliant. I am telling you, if you've not read Clive Barker, I thought Weave World was excellent, but we'll see what Books of Blood. I've not read or watched The Hellraisers, so we'll see. I'm waiting for my parents at, can you see? DQ because I don't need ice cream. <laughs> So I'm just in the car hanging out reading. Did a little lead workout and getting a little run in this morning. Note to self, stop reading horror novels and running alone. Just a little sweaty.
where we're camping is so nice because it's just over this little crosswalk and then right to the beach over there. Another day, another wave. This way. Oh my gosh, you are coming so close to me. Excuse me, sir, I have no food. There's a car right here. Last morning run by the beach. Absolutely beautiful. Perfect weather. Hello. It's laundry day again. I just got back from vacation doing like three loads of laundry. We did the grocery store, you know, unpacking the usual, but I want to update you guys before I forget because since I last talked to you, I've read an entire book and that is Earthlings. And I'll put the picture in because I can't remember the author's name right now, but it is translated. And I think I was mentioning it in my last clip. Yeah, because I said that my patrons voted on it. Now, I'd only heard about this book from one of my favorite booktubers, which is Kat from Paper Paperback Dreams. And she was like, I don't recommend this book, but she enjoyed it and it was weird. So that's generally what I'm looking for. So I was like, Let's do it. I want to see what this book is all about. I had no idea the subject matter of this book. I just knew I wanted something weird. It's my vibe lately. Why are we having this where it looks like the sun, like I don't understand why the lighting is like this right now, but that's what we have to do with. So anyways, I went into it wanting magical realism, wanting something really weird, wanting like more of a literary fiction type of book because that's what I'm feeling lately. I don't wanna read anything else. And it deals with some heavy subject matter. So I gave it a five out of five stars. I absolutely loved it. To begin with, we've got quite a few time jumps. We're following this little girl who has this hamster who is like this little guy that gives her powers with her wand and um, teaches her about aliens from another planet. So the most spoiler free way that I can say this is that the magical realism is used as a device to like a coping mechanism for trauma and abuse. And that's one of my favorite tropes, one of my favorite things to read about. It's been done in a couple young adult books and I've not really read it in adult books as frequently. So I wanted to check it out and I'm so thrilled I read this book. But when I tell you there's like every single content warning possible, I'm not kidding and I'm not exaggerating. I don't get sick easily and I don't get grossed out easily. The descriptions at the end of this book nearly made me vomit. Like, like I was sick to my stomach. And there was also some of the most disturbing scenes I've ever read in my life. So I am 90% sure that this will be the weirdest, most disturbing thing you've ever read if you do decide to pick this up. I'm going to list some of the content, warnings, subject, matter. I do think that it's spoilery. And I would not listen to this unless you are somebody who needs to know what is in it 
in order to prepare yourself. So if you're just somebody that's like, sign me up, skip, I'm gonna put content warnings, skip this section, because I promise you, you'll like it better if you don't know these things. So I'm gonna say now. We have like pedophilia, we have sexual assault, rape, murder, incest, cannibalism, is that all of them? There is abusive familial relationships. Um, it is a lot. So that is most of the major ones. And if you don't think you can read graphic scenes about those things, then don't pick this up. If you're like me and you're like, I have to find out what this is about, then pick it up. As I said, I think that it really discussed themes such as there's this, she refers to the world as the factory and they want you to be, like factory workers or tools for the factory in the sense that everybody in society is just kind of going along with everyone else's plan, trying to be what society wants them to be, get married and have babies, continue on with race, etc. work your life away. So I really appreciated those themes as somebody who plans to stay single and plans to be not a parent or a mother. I think there's so much pressure from society and it has got to stop. It should be completely normal and no guilt going along with a woman choosing not to have a baby. So it explores those topics quite heavily as well as like emotional abuse, sexual abuse as a child. It was so hard hitting and I'm glad that I could read it in two days. So I read books this weekend. I read two of them in two days each. I finished The Last House on Needless Street on my way up. I read the entirety of The Word for World is Forest while I was there in two days, mostly in one day. And then I read earthlings yesterday and today as well. So two more things. The audiobook that I've been listening to after finishing, oh, did I even update about finishing? <sighs> I don't think I did. I finished The Book of Accidents by Chuck Wendig. And while I think the writing is actually very good, um, it was well done. It's just not my thing. It is my fault again. So if you love Imaginary Friend, this is the book for you guys. You get it. Uh, if you didn't, Maybe give this one a pass. A lot of us agreed in my Patreon, because we buddy read this, that it was eerie, it was a good atmosphere, it was creepy, but we all wanted more horror. It had more horror elements in the beginning, not the second half nearly as much. So it was like a five out of five stars for the first 40%, and then it just kind of lost me and went downhill a bit. You guys know I do not like paranormal horror. I, I think somebody called this cosmic horror. And then I'm kind of sad because I thought I was gonna like that. I don't know. I don't know too much about it, but there are certain tropes that deal with paranormal horror that I don't like, and this book has every trope that I dislike, and that's my fault. So it's not the book's fault at all. Um, the only thing I did love is the main character, Oliver, and his empath abilities and such. And like I said, the atmosphere was great. It's just the idea of the actual plot I didn't love um, with like multiple timelines and such. That's just not a trope I like. And there were a lot of things that reminded me of what I didn't like about Imaginary Friend, but the parts that I did love about Imaginary Friend, I felt like you sort of gotten this as well. So there's that. The next thing I picked up is Persepolis Rising by James S. A. Corey, the seventh book in the Expanse series. I'm about 33% of the way through it right now, so I need to change my bookmark because I'm listening to it. I don't know if I like listening to the audiobooks of these so far, but this book series is kind of going downhill for me. I just don't find it that gripping and interesting right now. I don't know if it's just the topic of this one. Book five was really the peak for me and book six didn't work quite as well. And book seven is okay. It's like a three and a half out of five star read right now, which is worth reading and good, but maybe it's not gonna be that bad that the last book is coming out because I think they've sort of exhausted what they're doing with this series in this world. So I'm just really ready for it to be done, I guess, because it's not doing anything really super innovative or new and exciting and cool. It feels kind of tired. I'm so sorry for saying that. It feels a little tired at this point. And we had this discussion over the weekend with my family that like when things try to go on for too long, it is just no good that it, it doesn't work out. And I think that this book is suffering from that a little bit. But who knows? Maybe it'll turn around. I'm only 30% of the way through. And the last thing that I picked up on the way home because I had finished Earthlings is finally the Patreon buddy read. I do do spoiler filled exclusive Patreon only reading vlogs, so I won't talk about it too much, but She Who Became the Sun by Shelley Parker Chan is what our Patreon buddy read of the month is. I was really nervous getting into it because it seemed very 
detailed. And I am really over fantasy like that right now. And I thought it was going to be a ton of history and world building, just the way that the titles were set up and stuff. But it is so readable and it is so accessible. I am flying through it. I, I mean, we had a long drive home, but I'm already on page 83. Um, so I'm about 18% of the way through it and very much enjoying it. But that's all I'm going to say here. And I will update my Patreon vlog soon. So those are most of the weekend reading updates. This is what I'm reading right now. I've actually really, um, not true to form, love, I've been loving reading like one thing at a time. So sticking to one audiobook and one physical book, and it's been excellent because I can get them done. I'm reading what I want to read. Literary fiction, magical realism, short things, horror, and it's good. Oh my gosh, I'm disgustingly gross. We were just doing some landscaping for the house. So basically for the irrigation system to be installed for my lawn, um, I have an acre and you have to do like a three foot parameter on the house so that the um, water doesn't ruin the siding because there's iron in the water and it rust stains and whatever and it just can't get on the siding because even when you clean it, it leaves like damaged spots. So we have to dig because my my irrigation system and my lawn to be put in you guys I might as well just like sell my kidneys um so we're doing it ourselves this perimeter and putting stone in it and digging it and leveling it all out and it's a joke and it's 95 degrees in Michigan uh as we're doing it and I'm drenched in sweat and then a storm rolled in and I'm just like so gross yucky but um I wanted to give a couple updates here real quick so what did I finish today Ready? Don't cry, okay? Just, just don't cry. Um, I gave this a 2.75 out of five stars. And I know, I know, I know I'm gonna get some hate for it because you guys love this book. Everybody loves this book. It's everyone's most anticipated release. Everyone says how wonderful it is. And it just didn't work for me in any way, shape or form. Um, and I'm sad because it's a Patreon buddy read for the month and I really thought it would be something that I absolutely adored and it's just not. So, like I said, I'm saving most of my thoughts, but real quick, 2.75 out of five stars. Basically, I thought it was a whole lot of missed potential. The ideas were excellent, excellent ideas. And it even tried really hard with some themes of basically following a path of greatness and choosing what you want and getting it even if you're a woman type of thing. There was supposed to be a great female-female like, relationship and what I got was absolutely no characterization, flat, do it, can I say garbage? Terrible, terrible. I felt like none of the characters had any, they were so like cookie cutter and I felt at a thousand foot distance from all of them because I just couldn't care less. I didn't feel one emotion this whole time not one emotion other than bored. When can I be done reading this? I would have DNF'd it if it wasn't my Patreon buddy read. So characterization is a no-go. Uh, character relationships, interpersonal relationships, character development. So all three of those things kind of together. The relationships, what? There was not enough fleshed out, even, even a little bit, for me to believe some of the motives for what characters were doing, for me to even care a single shred of a bit. We needed way more backstory. Another thing I hated, the time jumps, how we would just get from her childhood to the monastery, to this, to that, to the next thing. Hated the time jumps. Um, the POV changes. We spend the first 20%, the entire part one of the book is with one character. And then it's all different after that, all different POVs. And it's like, that's not well planned out in my opinion. It should have been more variety to begin with or we should have stuck with it that way. Um, pacing I thought was terrible so it's a ton of like planning uh, we're trying to conquer everything and be the best of the best and even though I don't like battle in action we rarely see any of the things happening it's just more so like I'm gonna do this oh look I did it it's just convenient and I did it because I am a winner and I am destined for greatness and I was like hmm, I don't believe that so I had to suspend my disbelief constantly more so I just felt nothing I didn't care I was so apathetic I didn't think that oh the other thing is I didn't like the writing the writing was way too overly descriptive at times for me so it started out pretty easy to read and then as you got into it it was like I literally couldn't care less about what they're eating right now 
couldn't care less. I couldn't care less about some of the setting descriptions too because of the way they were done. So like, please, I don't wanna hear one more thing that they're eating because I don't care. It was so overly descriptive. So I'll stop now. Um, if you love this, I'm so happy for you. This is your jam. Eat it up, baby cakes. And just, you know, read the next one for me because I'm not going to. I did I did order the Book Depository UK edition because I like it way better than this cover. I don't like this cover, but the one with the Chinese dragon is where it's at. So this was full of missed potential in my opinion. Um, so then what else? I'm still listening for Persepolis Rising. I'm liking it a bit more than last time I checked in. Good old faithful. It's what I call that series. It's never a huge letdown, but it's also never like super exciting favorite thing, but it's a good enough time. And then, oh, so I put this poll on for my Patreon of what I should read next. And it was either going to be The Wasp Factory or Fever Dream. And I made a mistake because I needed an ebook. <laughs> they don't know this yet. And it turns out the only copy of Fever Dream available is an audiobook. So that's the one that won the poll. So I have to figure out how to fit that into my schedule, but it's a really short audiobook. I think it'll be conducive to a listen as well. So we're gonna do that and maybe I'll pick up the Wasp Factory anyways. I don't know, I'll let you guys know what I decide I'm gonna pick up next because I tell you what I'm not in the mood for. Anything like this, any kind of fantasy like this, period. Oh my God, no, please no. And um, hmm. I'm not being negative Nancy, I'm just being honest and I know I'm not alone because when I put in my Goodreads review, um, as I was like 75% of the way through, I was like, am I reading the same book as you? I know I have an ARC edition, but are we reading the same thing? And other people were like, oh my God, I thought it was just me. Everyone loves this book. It's my most anticipated and I couldn't care less and I couldn't get through it and I had to DNF it. And I hate Reddit or I like Reddit not caring. And I was like, I got you girlfriend because I'm with you and I will be the voice that speaks up so that you can be heard as well. <laughs> and I really promise it's not that serious. I'm not hating on this book, but I'll let you guys know what I'm gonna pick up next because I'm not certain yet don't know what I'm in the mood for. To be honest, I want to go for another SF Masterworks. I've already read two this month and I want to keep going. And I, there's so many authors I want to read right now. There's so many authors. So I don't know. I really want to read literary fiction or classic sci-fi. We'll see what I pick up or like something really thematically heavy. I think there's this book called Magma. Um, I may pick that up. I'm not certain. We'll see. We'll find out but I'm gonna go shower. I got this huge nasty blister. It doesn't look bad here because I washed it all out, but it's like the skin's completely gone. And I have a lot of calluses um, from all my lifting days, but man, that's a lot of raking and shoveling today. So I'm also really excited because I switched up my workouts again. So way back when I stopped competing since I've been competing like my whole life and gym was life three hours a day. That's six, but three hours a day uh, in the gym lifting like it was my job, even though I was working full time. And so I was like, I'm either never going to work out again, or I'm going to stop lifting and do cardio. And now I do like a little, little tiny bit of baby lifting, mostly cardio. And I'm like, you know, I'm feeling like lifting again and doing minimal cardio. So the bad news is that means less reading time because I always read when I do cardio. But the good news is one, I think it's going to have a great change in my muscle mass ratio in my body <laughs> and two i'm really excited about it i'm really motivated and feeling really happy about the change up because i've always been like the weight lifter girl for a huge chunk of my life so to get that back feels kind of good we'll see because i'm starting from the bottom again i used to um i don't know if i've talked about this before i used to be able to squat 275 pounds um, my benching was always bad because when your pectoral muscles are sliced open, they're never the same again. Um, but then I used to be able to deadlift 315 as well. So now we're at baby weights. <laughs> That's okay. I'm not trying to be a power lifter again. Just starting small. Just doing what I can do. But I'm excited about it. But I'm going to go. I was thinking it had been much too long since you saw the children. Rana Bear, say hello. Such a lovely girl. Alfax. Hi, Mama. Hi, Mama. You are so precious. It's a little peek at my TBR show. And a car, Lou. Hi, sweet pea. I was going to take a video to show you guys what we've been doing. So you can sort of see it's the next day. Basically, we had to put down this whole borderline of this edging. I'll show you all this edging and I have clay at my house. So we had to rake it all, even it all out because the people that did my dirt leveling 
forget the name for that right now, or a joke. So then we had to dig the hole to put this edging in and then have stone delivered. This is my backyard pretty. And then we have been first hand shoveling this pile of stone over here. And then the neighbor let me borrow his tractor, bless his soul. So now that's what we're doing now. There's a little sneak peek of my back porch. You can see, cute little fan. I like it. It'll be nice to watch the storms. And this is what we've gotten done so far, quite a lot. We may be extremely sweaty, but I think all the rock is done. And it's looking good. When the day you get your hair done is also the day that you have to shovel stone. Um, so yeah. This is what it looks like when it's 95 degrees and like 100% humidity. That's okay. But um, she got the right color this time and I'm really happy. I've been wanting copper the whole time. We finally got a copper that I like. So anyways, let's talk about some books. That's why we're here. Okay, so I did finish Persepolis Rising, the seventh book in the Expanse series. And it was a 3.75 out of five stars. The beginning and the end were the most interesting parts. And I really liked the ideas there. I obviously can't talk about it since it would be spoilery, but we dealt with something cool that related back to the original thing that sort of made me attached to the series. The rest of the book was more so like a takeover. Um, and it just was much less interesting. I did not care very much about it. I think that it was rather dull and and suffered from pacing issues. I just didn't enjoy it a whole lot. I mean, it was okay. It was good enough. It was not bad. It just wasn't great. So that is Persepolis Rising. I really don't have too much to say other than like a lot of years have gone by at this point. So characters are different and changing, etc., etc. But you know, I'm definitely glad I read it. I'm looking forward to reading. I think it's Tiamat's Wrath and then I'll just be waiting for Leviathan Falls. The thing that sucks though is I own all the paperbacks so I will definitely have to wait until the paperback is released in order to own Leviathan Falls because I am not purchasing the hardcover of the last book in a series. Absolutely no way. Um, I'm covered in three million mosquito bites from shoveling again. Hopefully you guys saw what I was working on. And then, okay, so that's my audiobook. Then I have picked up Fever Dream, finally, and I have no idea what's going on literally do not understand what we're doing. We're talking about horses. <laughs> and um, so we'll see. I listened to that on the way to my hair appointment. So about 20% of the way through it, it's a very short audiobook, And I cannot say I'm that intrigued or interested so far. It's more like a, I don't know what's going on. So why should I care about what's going on type of thing? And it's not like really crazy things are happening. I guess there's like an idea that's been presented of like switching bodies sort of. So there's that. But I don't know. I'm not super motivated to finish it right now, but I'm going to because it's so short. We'll see. Then you guys, the book I've picked up to read as my next ebook is Folklorn and it is wonderful. It is absolutely everything I'm interested at this time. It is like speculative fiction, magical realism. It's translated. It's dealing with Korean mythology, but it's also following a physicist. And so like super smart scientist doing experiments at the South Pole. And it gets a bit sciencey at, at times, but not like over the top, not too much. I quite enjoy it. I like those bits of science. It's also written in a very unique way very unique and I don't know if it's how it's coming across in translation or if it's just this author's writing style. Either way I'm devouring it but like reading it slowly but like savoring it. I guess savoring is the word not devouring. So I'm reading it very slowly taking my time and enjoying it and not rushing but I'm absolutely loving it. Like it totally captivates me. It totally sucks me in. And it's weird because generally I would say I wouldn't be glued to or attracted to this type of novel. And that's how I know my tastes are changing so much. More like literary fiction, contemporary, speculative, magical realism. That's what you're going to be seeing a lot of on this channel lately. So she's doing her scientific experiments, trying to prove something that is going to change the way that we have viewed so many things and basically like prove other possibilities but really we're focusing on some trauma that she has went through with her mother and father and brother and they came to the United States from Korea 
And then now she's in Sweden after she left the South Pole um, through part of her, I forget the word, um, but something to do with school. So she's kind of all over. So it has a lot to do with immigration. It has a lot to do with like standing out, being Korean, um, judgments and things like that. It also has to do a lot with her culture and her mother's culture and the war that happened and um, family members that went through it and passed and the trauma and after effects that it left on those who went through the war, but with a really unique intermixing of the folklore. And that's beautiful, it's stunning. And she sees a ghost. It's not a ghost story whatsoever. It's not like a paranormal story whatsoever. Think of her seeing this girl as speculative, um, sort of like when a child makes an imaginary friend type of thing. And it's so well done so far. It's brilliant, I think. I'm 33% of the way through. Like I said, I'm really taking my time. I don't have as much time to read lately since I'm doing more lifting <laughs> instead of cardio. And um, so that means I'll be able to physically read less books, but I do have more audiobook listening time because I listen to a book when I'm lifting. So I am super thrilled. I'm so excited about reading these different books. And friends, when I tell you, we have some really good different books coming up on me when I say we I mean my friends and I and Patreon because we buddy read so much stuff together but there's so much good stuff coming up um so keep an eye out for that I hope you guys are excited I'm just like over the moon I've like reignited my love and passion now that I've really realized hey I like fantasy I do but actually I think that magical realism speculative fiction literary fiction sci-fi is my loves um I don't know which order yet but it's not fantasy is not my one true love and I think I've always known that because it's the starless sea, but okay. Things like Strange the Dreamer being my favorite book of all time, or very metaphorical writing like in Nevernight, or the amount that I love Dune. Um, there's not really a fantasy story that stands out for me quite like that. So anyways, those are my updates. That is my one ebook and my one audiobook. And I'm supposed to get to start reading Foundation by Isaac Asimov. Um, so I need to finish Fever Dream before that. But that's all for now. Actually, that's the end of this vlog because I need to edit this um, ASAP. I actually need to go measure something out. I need to get sleet stone for the front of my house now, which is much harder to shovel. So we have to go measure that quick. So this is the end of the vlog. Thank you if you've made it this far. And um, if you have, then give me, give me any type of insect emoji because of how many mosquito bites I've gotten all week while working on this landscaping project. So, you know, if there's a mosquito, great. I doubt there is, but other than that, give me any choice of an insect if you've made it this far. I hope that you guys are having a lovely start to your weekend. Hope you have a fabulous time reading or not, whatever you choose to get up to. Thank you guys for watching and I will see you next time.